Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black poison deck featuring Scytherix the Blight Dragon as our commander. This was first introduced on Arena through March of the Machine as one of the bonus cards, but I haven't gotten around to featuring it until now. But this is a very unique card, the only card on Arena currently with the infect mechanic, so instead of dealing regular damage to the opponent, it instead deals that many poison counters instead, and it only takes 10 poison counters to win the game, so that's a pretty quick avenue to victory. And then instead of dealing regular damage to opposing creatures, it deals that many minus one minus one counters instead, so it also makes it hard to block. And then Scytherix can also activate for a single black to gain haste until end of turn, so we can often attack with it right away. And we can also regenerate Scytherix for double black, which is a very nice defensive ability. You might have seen cards like Wrath of God mentioning creatures cannot be regenerated, but there's not actually that many cards on Arena that have regenerate in the first place, but this is one of them. So that's a way to protect our creature if it would be destroyed. Instead, it's just going to be tapped and removed from combat. Can still maybe be exiled, for instance, so there are a few ways around regeneration but uh, still a nice ability to have so our game plan is going to be pretty simple just play Scytherix and then attack with it two or three times to hopefully win the game now to make that happen we will need access to quite a bit of mana to both play Scytherix and also use the various abilities so I've split up the deck into a few different categories here and as you can see by far the largest one is our mana acceleration lots of artifacts to give us more mana so we can both play and activate Scytherix then we've got a bit of spot removal, lots of two mana instant speed removal spells to slow down the opponent's game plan, maybe get rid of some flying creatures or reach creatures that might otherwise get in the way. Then we've got a group of cards that can help apply more poison to the opponent. That way, if we can apply two poison to the opponent that way, we only need to attack with Scytherix twice to close out the game, so that can speed up our clock by turn. So these include ways to directly apply poison or maybe proliferate poison counters that are already applied to the opponent. Then we've got some card draw effects and card draw engines that can repeatedly draw cards over the course of multiple turns that way we have more resources to fight the opponent and then we've got a few pump effects and other ways to maybe increase Scytherix's power that way we only may need to attack once or twice with Scytherix to close out the game then we've got a few discard effects as well, so we can maybe take away removal spells that could otherwise interact with our game plan. And finally, some board wipes as well, since we may fall behind early in the game, so having a way to catch back up after ramping out these more expensive sweepers can also be quite useful. And then uh, now for the detailed breakdown, starting with our mana acceleration, we can also rely on Dark Ritual, which can give us a nice explosive start. And then at 2 mana, we've got a couple artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag, which can also be put in kind of the equipment category here as a way to eventually pump up Scytherix when we play it, so it does double duty. Then at 3 mana, there's a Dragon's Horde, which will get a counter when Scytherix enters, so that can eventually draw us an extra card. Heraldic Banner also increases our black creature's power by 1, so that way we only need to attack with Scytherix twice, which is quite useful. Then we've got File of Galadriel, which can maybe draw additional cards or gain additional life. Talisman can gain some life when we tap it. Celestus can also give us card selection and life gain as it switches between day and night. Worn Power Stone makes 2 mana. And then at 4 mana there's Hedron Archive, which also makes 2 mana, can be sacrificed to draw. Solemn is a blocker on the ground while we try and attack in the air, so it can buy us a bit of time. And then when it enters it ramps, and when it dies it draws, so it does kind of everything we want it to. And then at 5 mana Gilded Lotus can make 3 mana. And at 6 mana, Caged Sun can essentially double our mana while also giving Scytherix plus 1 plus 1. And the plus 1 plus 1 cannot be underestimated, similar to Heraldic Banner, just speeds up our clock by a turn. Then our removal includes Scud Down, Fatal Push. Don't have many ways to enable Revolt since we're not running fetch lands to keep our life total high, but still pretty effective at killing early mana creatures. There's a Bitter Triumph, can also target Planeswalkers, Feed the Swarm can take out enchantments. And then at instant speed we have Go for the Throat, Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, Shieldred's Edict can be a bit more conditional, and then Shoot the Sheriff, another new addition, all great removal spells. And then at 5 mana Invoke Despair can also maybe draw us a few extra cards or deal with enchantments and Planeswalkers. And then Ugin, the Ineffable, can give our colorless spells a discount, so it's pretty good with all the ramp artifacts in the deck. And then can also make spirits and be used as removal with a minus 3. And finally March of Wretched Sorrow can also gain us a bit of life back, since as you may have noticed we have a few spells in the deck that make us lose life, since we're using our life total as a resource in a mono black deck, so having some life gain is always appreciated. 
Then our poison cards include the Skull Dweller, 1-1 one, one Death Touch with Toxic 1. So this one still deals regular damage, but also applies a poison if it hits the opponent. We've got Whisper of the Dross, minus 1, minus 1 to a creature, and we proliferate. So that can give the opponent an extra poison counter if they already had one. Same with the Blind Belly Rat if it dies, but it also has Toxic. Drown an Icker, a removal spell that can also proliferate. The Mirror can help a ramp, but also has Toxic if it gets to connect, can apply a bit of poison. Infectious Inquiry will draw two, lose two, but the opponent also gets a poison counter, so we can now maybe proliferate it. Then there's a Vraska's Fall, make the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, and they get a poison counter. Then a Staff of Completion can make mana at the cost of two life, can proliferate at the cost of three life, or draw a card at the cost of four life. It's also quite versatile. And then the Vraska Planeswalker can also draw cards and proliferate with the zero ability, or be used as removal with a minus two. And then our card draw includes the new Insatiable Avarice. can also be used as a tutor effect to maybe find specific answers. Sign in Blood can draw to at the cost of two life. Connections can be a little painful, but we're mostly interested in making treasures and drawing extra cards, even if we're not making a lot of shapeshifters. Frex and Arena can also draw an extra card each turn at the cost of a life. Then there's a Necro, which can also draw a lot of cards all at once, even though we skip our draw step. Dread Presence is a payoff for having a lot of swamps in our mana base, as we can deal two damage and gain two when a swamp enters, or if we can afford it, draw a card and lose one life. And then the Mortal Sun I also like, since we only have two Planeswalkers ourselves. And then uh, Planeswalkers are shut down, we get to draw an extra card each turn, get a one mana discount on all our spells, and creatures get plus one plus one, which once again can speed up our clock. And then our pump effects include Sugar Rush, giving a creature 3 extra power until end of turn, and we draw a card. Black Blade Reforged is 2 mana to play, 3 mana to equip a legendary creature, giving it plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control, so that way we can set up lethal in a single attack. The Iron Crag, as we mentioned, can also be an equipment. Corpses of the Lost gives 1 extra power to Skeletons, which also includes our Phyrexian Dragon Skeleton, as it turns out. And they get haste, so we don't even have to pay the 1 mana to give Skitherix haste, so we can attack with it a turn sooner, potentially. And then there's Sword of Wealth and Power, another new equipment. Can maybe help us uh, double up on an instant or sorcery, so it can be good with our removal spells. And can also give protection from instants and sorceries, so that can uh, protect Skitherix from maybe an exile effect. We've got Pact Weapon, another favorite of mine in this deck, as it makes it so we don't lose the game for having zero or less life. And then uh, if we attack, we can also reveal the top card, maybe pump up Skitherix and draw it. So that can also be a nice source of card advantage. And as long as we can regenerate Skitherix, we can dodge a lot of removal spells that would otherwise take it out. So Pact Weapon is extra powerful in this strategy. And then Brass Knuckles, a way to give Skitherix double strike. So that can also maybe set up a lethal in a single attack. And then our discard spells include at one mana, Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek and Thoughtseize. And then at two mana there's a Deep Cavern Bat, which can also maybe gain a bit of life back. So these are often going after opposing removal spells that might be able to deal with Skitherix. And then we've got Elspeth's Nightmare doubling up as a removal spell, that can also make the opponent discard and eventually exile their graveyard. And then we've got a few sweepers as well, with Crux of Fate being the best one, as it can often be a one-sided sweeper, destroying all non-dragon creatures, leaving our commander alive. Go to Gix's Command, which is also pretty flexible. And then Blood on the Snow is why we have all these snow-covered swamps in our mana base, as it can also maybe get back a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard. So sometimes it's okay to let our commander go to the graveyard if we can immediately get it back with a Blood on the Snow. And then finally, Overwhelming Forces, a powerful new sweeper. A little pricey at 8 mana, but with all the ramp artifacts we can easily support it. And then it can be a one-sided sweeper that also draws us additional cards. And then our mana base doesn't have as many utility lands as we could be playing, but I want to maximize the number of basic swamps for cards like Dread Presence, which will benefit from them, as well as Cabal Stronghold, which can give us a nice mana boost, which can be quite useful. So that's why I'm trying to max out on as many swamps as possible and only playing the best utility lands, such as the Black Castle to draw, Cavern of Souls to make our commander uncounterable against blue decks, Karn's Bastion to proliferate poison counters, and then Mirex can make 1-1 one, one Mites with Toxic 1, so that's another way to deal more poison. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and facing Itali, red-green ramp. Well, as long as they don't find some big reach or flying creature to get in the way, we might still be able to get him. And I'm not opposed to keeping this, can take out an early mana creature. Hopefully find a third land, and then we can ramp out Immortal Sun, which will make it easier to replay our commander if it does get removed.
opponent's got a Cold Steel Heart, which we can't quite take out here. But we found our own ramp artifact, so that's nice. Missing a land drop still kind of awkward here when we have all these ramp artifacts. Which is why I usually recommend starting with 40 lands as a baseline. Found Cabal Stronghold, that's nice. So we can play a Hedron Archive. And then, uh, yeah, could already play Scytherix next turn. But I might be more into the idea of Immortal Sun. Which will make it easier to replay the commander if it does get removed. So still one mana away from playing Itali. Although Rhythm is pretty scary since they might be able to immediately attack with whatever large creature they find. Primeval Titan's a good one too. Getting two lanes. Can attack right away, get two more lanes. So our opponent's gonna untap with all the mana they'll ever need. So I'm probably gonna keep up my Insta Speed removal and wait to see which creature needs to die. Whether it's Primeval Titan or something else. Swamp is good. And a Thought Seize. Okay, so we can at least check out their hand if we want to. Use Archive to kind of filter colorless mana into colored mana. I think I will need to deploy my commander here as well. So let's see, if I play Skitherix and give it haste, but then I don't have much removal up. So maybe I do wait another turn. And then for now, Thought Seize. And that's a pretty stacked hand. Probably grab Galta. And then we're looking at Shielders Edict, the Primeval Titan. Probably have to do it now before they can use Lair to sacrifice instead. And then Shoot the Sheriff can answer either Itali or Inferno. I guess I did have Fatal Push, which could have removed Lair in response to the Edict. But uh, yeah, was probably going to cast it either way. Opponent found Drowned in Icker, not the best, and Arcane Signet, so at least the tally could have been better. And Nissa can't activate because of Immortal Sun, so that's fine. And do I want to take 7? I don't really want to let him replay a tally next turn and introduce more unknown variables. And then Fatal Push can deal with Lair, Shoot the Sheriff can answer Inferno, so that should be fine. Signet pays for itself. And Stronghold is close to making additional mana as well here. Okay. I guess we do have the Iron Crag, which can suit up Skitherix, kind of forgot about that one. So that's useful. So I will transform, and then we can equip, give haste, and then still have shoot to sheriff and fatal push available. So I don't think we need to deal with Nissa. They don't even have that many force in play. So your opponent takes eight poison. There's Inferno. Just a dragon, so it's not a outlaw. And activate Lair. I 
Okay, so we should have it here. Can let them attack. Take seven. And poison them on the way back. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yuri, a Black Rat Sacrifice deck. My hand's reasonable. Might have preferred some hand disruption to take away opposing removal, as opposed to more of my own removal. Um, only have the one ramp card, but it's a functional hand. And then it's kind of tricky whether we play Cavern first or Swamp, because we may need a lot of black mana if we draw Necro, for instance, which requires triple black. But then again, we also have the uh, four mana creatures that, whenever we play a swamp, can draw us a card or deal damage. So that's a reason to play our non-swamps first. But I'll start out with two swamps, maybe next turn play cavern. And there's Yuri. And a blank blade's not bad here. So we'll name Phyrexian since it sounds scarier. And then uh, Black Blade. Not really in a hurry to answer Yuri. Can't wait and see what else they play. Face Breaker's worth taking out. Can do so with Bitter Triumph. And Ugin's not bad either. So I could play Skitherix, it's going to be without any form of protection. And without haste to get a first attack in. But then next turn I have Ugin as a decent follow-up. Or I could wait until we maybe immediately equip Skitherix for a one-hit KO. But that's going to require a bit more mana. And then for now keep up March. So I would need five mana, plus one for haste, plus three to equip. So that's 9 mana total to set up a 1 hit KO. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's still realistic. So let's try it. Because I feel if I play it now, it's just going to run into a removal spell. And we don't even have the regeneration shield available. So we're hoping they present a juicy target for March. Cutthroats. Not the most appealing targets, but uh, probably still better than going for Yuri. It's hard to tell. If they have a way to sacrifice a creature at instant speed, they can also deny the life gain of March. So let me just take two for now. See if they have a follow-up. Maybe it's still fine to take out Yuri, since it can also damage my Planeswalker. Alright, treasure map. So our opponent's tapped out, we'll cast this for x equals 4. And take out Yuri, which can deal 2 to me. Had I cast March in response to the Fabled Passage trigger, then I guess I could have saved myself a bit of damage, but... Now we can play Ugin, just gonna plus, don't feel... Like I need to take out the cutthroat right away. And a dragon sword we can cast for one mana with an Ugin in play. So hoping they don't have removal for planeswalkers, so we get to untap with it. And then uh, dragon sword essentially pays for itself. So then, if I draw another untapped land, I can maybe play the Horde, play Skitherix, and at least keep up the regeneration if we don't want to attack right away. Alright, they have a Grim Bounty, sadly, so Ugin down. And a Duress, pretty useful here to check out if the coast is clear. So maybe Duress first, and then if I decide that I want to play Skitherix, I can. And I'll just skip out on the Dragon's Horde. Opponent has a Bloody Betrayal. Claim the Firstborn, that one doesn't work on Skitherix at least. 
Now Gadrak can get in the way as a flying blocker. But uh, I'll grab the Betrayal for now. And then, yeah, we can play Scytherix. Since they don't have an answer to it in hand, at least. And then next turn we can equip Black Blade, so Gadrick has to chump. Now they do get to scry a bunch with Treasure Map to maybe find an answer. But then we're also not too far from replaying Scytherix. Put on kept on top, that's uh, a bad sign. Goldspan Dragon, yeah, that can attack and then still play Gadrak. So they still have a blocker for Scytherix. So they get to pull ahead here on mana. But if we draw a removal spell, we could still win. Three to equip. Leaves plenty of mana for an answer. Opponent kept on top again. And that's not a removal spell. Well, still gonna stick to the plan here. And then I'll be able to keep up the regeneration at least. So our opponent's gonna have to chump every turn from now on. And there's Yuri. Pretty good with all the treasure tokens. Bond is attacking, so presumably they found an insta-speed answer to Scytherix. So they can still kinda use it in the middle of combat, make me regenerate, and then I don't get to connect. It's going to be Crucius instead. So they don't have an answer in hand. They're just hoping to find one. And they'll have four mana to cast it thanks to Goldspan Dragon. So yeah, it's going to be random here. I guess six mana with uh, extra treasure. And yeah, opponent did not find the answer. And Scytherix can get there in a single attack. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kaya and Tangible Slayer, so having an Immortal Sun in my opening hand seems pretty good. Yeah, I'll try it. So we've got some early mana acceleration to try and get the Immortal Sun in play, although now Thoughtseize might have something to say about it. Well, we could draw our own discard spell in the meantime, although we won't be able to take Kaya. Authority also pretty good against our haste creature. So this will likely draw a card for 4 life. Which is a steep price to pay. There's a duress. So now I'm liking Hedron Archive plus duress. Or I could Archive plus Inquiry. And then wait a turn on the rest so we can protect our commander a bit better. And this uses up more of my mana. Alright, Nightmare, another way to check out our hands. Opponent's got their own. And a Blood on the Snow. So step on the rest. And yeah, Source to Plowshares is going to be a problem, opponent with her own blood, and Spider Queen. So, what to do here? So next turn our opponent gets to take my blood on the snow, basically. Opponent is missing a second black source, so they may be unable to cast their Spider Queen and blood on the snow at least. Although maybe I just take Spider Queen now, blood on the snow later. And hope to find a different answer to Swords to Plowshares. 
So maybe draw now. Find a convert which I can still play. And then next turn I can look into taking Blood on the Snow. Or maybe Swords to Plowshares, we'll see. Alright, they're gonna deal with the mirror now. Opponent plays Shieldred. Avarice is quite painful here with Shieldred out. So play Dragon. Can't attack because of authority. But is there a way for me to maybe tutor up a card to uh, set up a one-hit kill with Scytherix? I guess I might get the equipment. The uh, Pact's weapon. That way I can equip Scytherix so we don't die to regular damage. And if we get very lucky I could reveal some expensive card to win the game. Could also grab an Overwhelming Forces, which would be decent. But yeah, Pact Weapon is what I'm thinking about. Brass Knuckles can't quite deal lethal in a single attack. Crux of Fate would also be fine, but we should have the mana to cast Overwhelming Forces anyway. I think I get Pact Weapon. Opponent is still multiple turns away from Kaya. Just gotta hope they don't draw a different removal spell in the meantime. And then I'll have to discard my Swamp to equip Scytherix. Take our turn. Play the weapon. And then uh, equip, leaving black mana for regeneration. In case that matters. Could also proliferate before I attack. Because now I have the life to actually pay for it, whereas if we fall to two or less life I wouldn't be able to proliferate anymore. I guess we'll just let this happen. Reveal Frex in Arena. So we're at minus one life. And then there's probably no point in playing the Arena out. Alright, let's see if they found an answer. Something that exiles or makes me sacrifice would do it. Dreams does not. And a Curse of Silence doesn't either. Alright, looks like Scytherix is gonna get there. With us at minus one life. So happy we got the Pact Weapon. But uh, yeah, we definitely had some nice options. So as you can see, we don't have the life to activate Staff of Completion, since you cannot pay a life you don't have. But uh, if we lose life some other way, that works. And that's six more poison coming across. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jaya, a monorat kind of uh, control deck maybe. Yeah, I mean, against a control deck, I like ramp artifacts and card draw engines. And if they end up being a little bit more aggressive, we still have a march. Play Signet. Can expect some artifact removal out of a mono red deck. For now, Fable is a good one. So I think I'll untap, play Dragon's Horde, 
And then I can still march the Shaman if I'd like. Yeah, I guess that's the plan here. Pitching Whisper. So I can gain a bit of extra life. Interestingly, we could have also set up a play where we use Whisper to proliferate the opponent's Saga to give them a reflection a turn sooner so we can maybe sweep it up with our Crux of Fate. But uh, didn't want to give them the extra treasure token in the meantime. Opponent plays Jaya. And uh, we can attack with a hasty Scytherix, but still going to be one short of finishing off Jaya. So instead, I think I prefer Talisman plus Arena. And then maybe next turn Crux of Fates. And then we can put our Dragon to use. So Jaya can make Prowess Tokens, can deal damage if they attack. Or can go digging to find additional spells. Sticky Fingers on the 1-1. One -one. Okay, don't mind seeing more creatures in general here, since we've got the uh, Crux of Fate. Everything they know. So we can wipe the board. Opponent's gonna shock to get some extra damage from Flame Breather. That's fine. So when we play Scytherix, we'll trigger the Horde as well, so I want to keep that on tap to draw a card, maybe. More Planeswalkers. Well, I might just have to ignore the Planeswalkers and just try and poison them in the meantime. At least Regeneration's useful against a red deck, since they're not going to be exiling my creature. So I should have the mana to play Scytherix. Give it a haste and still keep up regeneration. And then if we don't need to do anything fancy, I can still draw with the Dragon's Horde. And Drown can proliferate, so... Yeah, I can maybe even drown my own Blightbelly Rat to proliferate twice, and that's potentially lethal next turn with another attack. Since we would deal four poison and then two more. So yeah, unless they can come up with maybe a flying blocker or multiple instant speed answers, we should be alright. Chandra doesn't do it, since we can just regenerate. And the way regeneration works, if you're not familiar, it kind of makes this regeneration shield on the creature that says if it would be destroyed instead remove the shield, tap it and remove it from combat as well. It's not the most intuitive ability which is why they probably got rid of it. But uh, yeah, the coast seems clear. So attack, dealing for more poison. And then we're going to take out our own rat just to proliferate. Could also proliferate their planeswalkers if we're feeling generous. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kaza, Royal Chaser, so wizards. And uh, our hand is all ramp which is not necessarily a bad place to be. The uh, Mirror Convert is unlikely to survive, but uh, we'll just prioritize playing our author artifacts first. Finding a removal spell for their commander could also be nice. Uh, 
next turn I can play Dragon's Horde into Mir. Unless they counter it here. Okay, and then uh, next turn we can attempt to deploy our commander. Alright, opponent's gonna keep up a bunch of mana. So getting this countered would feel bad, because then we don't even trigger the Dragon's Horde. So, yeah, given that they're being passive, we can probably go for Staff plus Guardian Idol. And uh, take it from there. And then Staff can draw since they're not pressuring my life total. And the Mirror Convert can maybe apply a Poison. Okay, uh, Guardian Idol is still fine, could draw first. And Vraska's Fall is not bad either. It is an instant, so we could keep that up. I feel like our opponent's going to keep up mana once again. Okay. Opponent's discarding a Magma Opus. There's a few ways to cheat that into play if they have Mizzix's Mastery. Which is going to be a Kaza for now. And then we've got a few ways to move forward here. Maybe Vraska's Fall, and then... Let's see. I still have the mana to play Ugin. All right, Kaza down. Although maybe at this point, if they are holding a counter spell, I prefer them countering my commander, unless their counter spell specifically counters commanders. If it's a wash away, so yeah, let me try Ugin. Might bait out a counter spell. Well, speak of the devil, and then next turn we'll. Maybe deploy our commander. We have the mana to cast Overwhelming Forces. But there's not too many creatures on the other side. Okay, let's we'll see if they have a wash away, I guess. They do not. Maybe should have tapped Guardian Idol since it doesn't make black mana for Skitherix's ability. But our opponent scoops it up. We can give it haste. And then uh, I can still play Swamp. And then, yeah, keep up double black to regenerate it in case they have a burn spell. And then it's two attacks to win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing Marwyn the Nurture, an elf deck. So... My game plan should be to at least have one answer to Marwyn to slow them down, and then we should be able to take them out in the air with our commander. This hand doesn't really do that. Sign and Blood's nice. Sugar Rush just kind of speeds up our clock without disrupting the opponents, and Gilded Lotus is pretty slow. So I think I can do better. Alright, this counts. Got one piece of interaction. Skull Dweller can maybe... Get a couple points of poison in. If we can deal two poison, then it's only two attacks from Skitherix. Although now with the corpses, we can also increase its power by one. So, not gonna bitter triumph the goose. Just gonna take out Marwyn herself if they play it. And then turn three corpses. Don't have a turn four play lined up yet. And an Augur of Autumn is next. Alright, that's also a good target for triumph. Crux of Fates, alright. So I still don't have anything planned for next turn. But at least Crux of Fate gives us a reset button if the opponent's board gets out of hand. Ooh, my Vandal's a good one, can blow up my enchantments, so no more haste on Skitherix. And Immortal Sun's pretty far from getting cast. Okay, um, do we trade for Masked Vandal? Doesn't seem all that important, so I'll just wait. 
I guess it is technically a dragon, so if I Crux of Fate destroy all non-dragons, the uh, Vandal would survive. So maybe that's a reason to trade for the Skull Dweller now. But yeah, we dealt her two points of poison, which is what matters. Play Skitherix, and then next turn I can destroy all non-dragons. And then two attacks from the Blight Dragon might be able to close it out. So just hoping our opponent casts a couple more creatures here. Invasion of Ikoria can get a one drop. It also adds two devotion for Nykthos. Okay. So what's next? Harmonize to draw. And then a Gilded Goose could chum block our dragon. Opponent's got a lookout, another reach creature. Yep, so Crux of Fate's looking good. And if they don't have another removal spell or reach creature, this might be game over. Otherwise, I'm hoping to find an untapped land for Immortal Sun. Or maybe a removal spell to clear a path. And yeah, opponent does not have an answer and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Taisa, the new spirit commander. And this card is incredibly powerful. So instant speed removal is going to be nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this hand stands a chance. Although, in general, this is going to be an unfavorable matchup just because the opponent can generate so many chum blockers to get in the way of Skitherix. So it's going to be hard to actually punch through and uh, get to connect. But uh, yeah, as far as opening hands go, this is certainly functional. We'll need to keep up Heartless Act to answer Tessa. Because once this gets going, it's pretty scary how quickly those spirits become lethal. And then I don't need to Thoughtseize right now, I think I wait either until next turn to take away some ramp, or we can go Banner into Thoughtseize, and then maybe take away removal for Scytherix. Opponent's got to Signet, and Authority is a good one too. But I can still go Banner, keep up Heartless Act now, as opposed to Thoughtseize, since... Uh, yeah, we have to answer Tessa. So as soon as it enters, I'm gonna get rid of it. They still get a spirit token, which is gonna be kind of annoying. And Dark Ritual's interesting. Thought cease to maybe clear a removal spell, and then I could still ritual out Skitherix. Could also cast Inquiry to draw some cards and hit more land drops. But with the Authority, it's going to take me an extra turn before we actually get to attack. So we'll start with Thoughtseize. And they've got a way to save Taisa. Captain, I don't care about too much. So, yeah, not the most powerful hand. So I guess we'll uh, take the Captain then. And then, yeah, we could ritual out Skitherix. And sadly, haste is not gonna matter. Now, we do have the Brass Knuckles, so I could potentially win in a single attack. But they're definitely gonna keep back the Spirit for a turn. And now Invasion can make my spells more expensive. And yeah, if they can play Taisa, they can just keep making more Spirits, so we need to find more removal for it. Takes Inquiry, and then they can't afford to attack, otherwise they're dead. I guess we would need an untapped land to equip both Knuckles onto Skitherix. But yeah, opponent passes back. 
Okay, so I can inquiry. And then what are we hoping for? Because yeah, next turn our opponent can play Taisa, pump the spirits, which can actually transform the invasion. So maybe I force them to chump with a spirit right now with the knuckles. And then our opponent's kind of in permanent chump block mode. And then inquiry can maybe find some answers. Well, a dragon wielding two brass knuckles. Don't see that every day. But yeah, I recommend blocking. Not that after all is not going to do much when targeting a token, since it's still going to be gone here. So maybe not the best play. But with the land they can replay Taisa. And it looks like they didn't find it, and yeah, Skitherix with a single attack is 10 poison. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, blue-green, ramp. And uh, yeah, a decent hand here, I would say. Maybe a little too heavy on the three mana cards. But these will help ramp out Immortal Sun. And then uh, hopefully they won't have too many ways to interact with our commander. Turn to Mindstone, don't mind it. Well, their opponent off to the uh, ideal start with a turn one Utopia Sprawl as well. And a Palladium Mirror. Alright, probably have to answer that before it gets out of hand. Otherwise they can already play Moti next turn, and that's no good. We were close to playing an artifact into Vraska's Fall. But uh, we'll have to slow down our own plan a little bit. Bronze Walrus is next. That one's not quite as scary. And then we can go Banner into File. And then I might play Immortal Sun before playing Skitherix. Or we can just go for a hasty Skitherix next turn. Okay, one's got a nice 6-5. And it can uh, potentially come back and drown a little bit short of uh, taking it out here. So what happens if this hits us? They get to look at the top six essentially and put a creature or land on the battlefield. Yeah, that could be pretty bad. I can take it out with March, then I wouldn't get to cast Immortal Sun yet. But uh, that might be necessary. And then I can't take out the Walrus either, since I'll be one mana short. Yeah, close call. If I just go Skitherix, give it haste attack, at least I'll be able to kill them in two attacks. So, may as well march for six here. Still gives him an extra lane, so... They can now play Moti. Which finds a replicating ring. Okay. And a Loam Speaker. Yeah, I think we Immortal Sun, and then I can play one mana Drown on Emoti. Proliferate the poison we dealt with Vraska's Fall. And then next turn, thanks to File, I'll get to draw an extra card as well. And then, yeah, hope to get there in two turns. Emoti finds up the Beanstalk, so that's gonna draw them some more cards. Just hoping they don't have a counterspell up here. But I guess the rest can check out if the coast is clear. Eaten by Piranhas, that would be a pretty great answer to Skitherix, so glad to take it. Still see Thorn Mammoth that can fight. 
So we might want to keep up the regeneration shield if we can. But yeah, happy to take that away. So if we play Skitherix, tapping Mindstone, I can give it haste and then still keep up regeneration so we can't quite sugar rush. Although let's see if I sugar rush. Opponent's already got two poison. This goes up to eight power, so we actually just win here. All right, I guess just winning works. And I guess I even forgot one extra power from Banner. So this is actually one more than we need. All right, not bad. Single attack from our commander to win the game. And yeah, against some pretty powerful commanders that we faced along the way with totally functional draws. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this strategy. Ramp, a little bit of interaction to make sure the opponent doesn't have great answers to our commander. A bit of removal to interact as well. And then it's only going to take us two attacks on average to win the game with Scytherix. Between all the extra poison we can deal, proliferate, and maybe additional pump effects. So it's a pretty straightforward plan, but it seems to be pretty effective. And if you're a fan of poison decks or mono black control strategies, this may be up your alley. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.